Hey everybody, welcome back again, live, starting all over again with all these little updates. Uh, I appreciate everybody's patience as they waited for me to start kicking these in, but as I talked before, this is uh, October 25th, it is go time, so I hope you guys are all excited, I know I am. I actually have a deer I'm going to go sit on a night with a friend that, uh, man, is an incredible deer, well over 200 inches, not sure obviously if we're going to see him or get an arrow in him, um, that's because it's called hunting, not shooting. Or harvesting so the program today is uh, I'm gonna run you through and as always I try to keep these as short sweet and significant as possible for you so I will probably be doing one of these every single day so if you don't like getting updates every day you probably want to sign off on this page otherwise like my page check it out and uh, you can look through some past histories and things I like got but today we're gonna go over my basic tree stand setup um, weather wise before I jump right into that there is uh, right now some low pressure that's moved into the area and we've got clouds coming, we've got rain coming tonight. That is money for the opening day, in my mind, of the 25th. It's a, it's a phenomenal opportunity. Normally I like to see what we call October kill windows happen, which is whenever the wind shifts from a south pattern to north pattern within about an hour's time frame, but about two hours before dark. If that happens, it's what I call the October kill window. And you may or may not get some of those in October. Sometimes you get three of them, sometimes you get none. Um, and I, I honestly wasn't here early enough to know if we got any early, but I haven't seen one yet. Um, so today is not really one of those days, but it is the kickoff of what, in almost every situation, I see bucks start to respond to grunts and start to respond to rattling uh, antlers or black racks like I use. Whatever it is that you use, now's the time that deer will start responding to those. So there's an entire calling system and library of stuff that you can check out. Um, I think there's some maybe on my YouTube page when I get it turned on here in a few days or whatever it's going to be. And uh, there's also one I think I'm sure on the Deer Society's page you can get on there and check that out. All that footage I give to them is 100%. I just give it to them to help them out. Um, they got to make a great call uh, and we'll get into all that calling system later. So what I want to talk about today is besides the kickoff and where you should probably hunt, which I'll wait until a little bit later for that just to make sure you stay in. I want to show you my tree stand system. So obviously wear a safety harness all the time. I will tell you that what you're about to see is probably not like what a manufacturer would be happy to see, but it's a really bulletproof system. Actually, the one modification that I use most of the time and haven't used for a while because I've been managing properties and we already have sets already built for guys is this system is actually um, a screw-in tree step, and I'll, I'll get up close here and show it to you in a second. A screw-in tree step that's welded to a tube in which slides down onto another tube which makes up the center of your tree stand. It's super, super, super efficient, and I like it because, like I'm doing this year, I'm going to be hanging and hunting every single time, meaning when I get to a location I'm going to hunt, I'm going to go do my scouting, um, which some of it are already done. I still have some more to do. I'll do those during the middays until about November 1st when I start hunting midday, November 2nd-ish, uh, depending on the weather. But until then, I'm going to be out scouting, finding my, my locations, trimming my shooting lanes, and prepping them. So all I have to do is get to the bottom of the stand, throw my climbing sticks up, throw my tree stand up, sit in and I'm hunting and that may sound a little bit complicated but I think after you see the system that I use you'll see it's actually pretty fast and I would argue that I can probably be most people off of their climbers whatever kind they are in the time that I get mine off my pack up in the tree and settle before they get up to their last little push at the same height with their with their climbers so here's the system like I said not tree stand manufacturer approved I get it but unless you're a gorilla that weighs like 500 pounds, I'm pretty sure this is gonna hold you. So the system I have, and like I said, I'll bring it up here in a second, but first of all, this is the stand I'm going to. This stand kind of always been my go-to stand actually. Um, and this one I got, I picked up at a, actually a garage sale. Um, and this one I've had for a couple years, but I haven't really employed it much. So I've got to change the system. This has a typical lone wolf system on it. And how it works, if you've never used one before, yes, they're expensive, but remember, I'm only carrying one stand and use one stand. They're ultra light. I like the compactness of this. Unfortunately, I don't know if they make that size platform. It's a, it's a, it was a really small platform they have. And there's a couple other stands you can do this with too, by the way. So the square alum, aluminum housing, actually this is steel, I believe, on the center of the lone wolf section is what I make the adaptation to. And I'm going to show you a rusty one because I've got to do that to this one. This is just an old stand. It's too big for me. I don't like the platform. It's too heavy. This is a lone wolf. And this is where the system kind of begins. I've already got the other part in the tree. I'll zoom up to that in a second. So this is what I use. It may look scary to some of you. This is mountain climbing rope. Like people hang off of mountains with this. So 
I'm gonna trust it with my life 20 feet off a tree if they trust it off the side of Mount Kilimanjaro. So what I do is I take and I drill a hole through the side of this and I run this mountain, mountain climbing rope, which is 3 8 inch thick. I run it through the back of that and this actually system, all credit to Jim Hole Jr. who's a whitetail god, look up to a lot. And I know he's not watching because he doesn't do Facebook, but if you were, I'm sure he'd smile. But I run this uh, rope through there, the knot on the back end, obviously. It's not gonna go anywhere. And run it through this tree stand just like that. When I swing it around the tree, it goes through a boat cleat from like a boat shop kind of thing. It costs like three bucks. And you run it through the cleat back and forth, and then you flop the stand down after you put on a little adapter. So I'm gonna show you that right now. Sorry for moving in and out. I don't really have any assistance today. And you're in my backyard, so hopefully I don't lose any of uh... Okay, so this little guy here is the bracket that I use. All I did with this is simply welded this tube to this tree step. So obviously this is all steel. Um, and if you don't have a welder, you can find somebody who'll do this for you for like next to nothing. So I weld this tube on there. It's got another welded tube inside of that. And that inner tube is what I'm gonna set my stand on. So when I take my stand off my belt, which is another really slick system. Every time I go in and out of a tree, I'm trying to stay back, because I don't know if somebody help me with this, but when I go in and out, I put this, this goes on my pack, my tree stand does. And then I put on a little hook that goes on my belt, and I have three of these around my back, and that's what, actually, yeah, three of them, and that's what my steps actually hang off to, of, which I'll get to in a second. So I take this stand, and once I'm up in my tree, all I do, Obviously, this has a seat on it normally, but I took it off just so it's easier to show you. Um, and it's rusty because I haven't used it for years, so I'm not going to be using this one. But I'm going to do the same thing the other system. Take this stand. I, once I screw in my, in my step into my tree, I take it and I just set it on that little part right there, flip it up, and it's in. All the insurance of having a tree step. So I guess, you know, for those of you who are thinking, like, this is a major safety concern. I guess I would say if you're using tree steps at all, which are tree stand manufacturer approved, you should be good to go because this should hold all your weight, no problem. The weight requirements for the tree stand manufacturing association, I don't remember off my top of head, but they're like stupid, like way overboard, but they're being safe, so I get it. So after I get this on there, slide it on, flip it down, I run my mountain climbing rope around through the boat cleat, just like this. And I just got this open so you can see it better. Normally I do this with it mostly up, And after I run it through the lashes, I'm done. That's going like absolutely nowhere. Again, I would do this with it folded up, hanging with my safety belt if I was actually in the tree doing it. So since I don't have any help, this is how we're doing it. Run it through there, serpentine belt. You know, obviously make sure it's tight. It's not gonna go anywhere downwards. This goes down, this stand will not go anywhere. Absolutely under no circumstances have I seen it go anywhere. And uh, those of you who know, Jim Old Jr. has been hunting for years with this type of system. He's the one that showed it to me. I love that that takes a little bit of modification. And yes, I'm sure, I can't read the comments from here, but I'm sure people are saying, well, there's Hawk tree stands and there's ABC tree stands that do all the same thing. I, I know, I get it. This is what I have, so I'm not gonna go out and buy a whole bunch of new stuff. And this system has worked absolutely phenomenal for me all the time. So hopefully that'll make sense, super easy. The other system that I have that I'm using temporarily until I get time because it's go time. And like I said, we're on a 200 inch buck tonight that I'm super excited about. I hope he gets them, but we'll see. The other system I use for now, which is completely factory, is I have this little band that goes around there. It's made by a company called HME, uh, which is, I don't know, it just says HME hunting products on it. It's like five bucks at Shields or wherever you shop at. And it has little utility hooks on there. This is pretty slick because I can use these utility hooks to also hang my bag on there when I get up there or anything else that I, I go up in the tree with. I like to, if at all possible, have all of my stuff with me at all times, meaning up off the ground. I don't like to touch the ground. I don't like using my bare hands. I don't, I don't like wearing rubber boot, or leather boots. I wear only rubber boots. Very, very cautious of that. So I like to keep, if, I, if at all possible, I like to keep everything on my pack. It all goes up the tree with me. It's all very, very safe. Obviously I get up there and I've got my, my safety rope attached before I even start hanging my stand. And then I'll go ahead and put this strap on for the tree stand after I'm at the top and this little strap has these plastic hooks like I said usually I think it comes with three so there's usually two on the back I have just to hang extra gear on there once I'm up in there until I get my screw-in steps in where I'm going to hang my stuff off of which isn't much 
and then I use my tree stand, which this is, like I said, factory lone wolf, nothing different special about it. It has a little slot in the back and they do make a hook for this, by the way. Um, so you could kind of adapt what they, what it comes with, but um, I don't know. I don't know where it's at. So I'm using this. <laughs> and I kind of like it. It's a little bit lighter. It's not metal. So I'll take that, pop it on there. And once it's up on there, now my stand's just hanging there, obviously. It's not meant to, don't stand on the stand like this, obviously. Just a piece of plastic holding, is holding it on. So once I do that, it's got two straps, which honestly you can get away with one, I think, in my experience. Take a strap, run it around, put it through the peg, or on the peg, the loop. And then you just tighten it up. And the only function of this was just to hold it there so that when I'm up, I'm completely hands-free. I've got my safety rope on, and I'm hanging off the tree, and I'm getting all my stuff done, which they say happens really, really rapidly. So this only function is to hold that like that. Pull it tight. Um, if you're into the double strap thing, pull it like this super tight, and then put your double strap on around, which not like this is complicated, but it goes on there, pull it tight, and then flip it down. And that is that is not going absolutely anywhere. Um, it's super, 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 super safe. So only other equipment I know I can tell you on my tree stands, like, like I said, this system will be converted from this one, I, I like this one way better. It also, I can make these for like nothing um, with just a little welder and some screwing steps and the screwing steps get dull over time. So I like using uh, easy steps that we want to use. I also noticed Hawk um, has some really sharp tips, although I don't want to make a tree stand step. So I'm sure somebody's commenting on that now. You're welcome to. Um, but this is the system I use. So it's super fast, it's super efficient. One of these days I'll do a, on my podcast, I'll actually do a video podcast when I have somebody help me, I think, and sh show you actually me skipping up a tree 25 30 feet so that you can see how fast and efficient it really is the only other thing i'd say about the tree stands is i use hockey tape on everything i don't go through this when i'm working on properties or when i was managing properties a lot because most of the time i mean first of all most of the time they were bigger properties and we'd have 30 40 sets on them it would absolutely drive me bonkers and drive anybody else bonkers is trying to hockey tape them all but on my stuff because i only have one everything i have is hockey taped almost all the time. So if you don't use hockey tape, this is what it looks like. If you've never used it before, four bucks at Shields, everything gets wrapped in this. If you don't like the color, get a gray one, which I've got some on here. Still a little work in progress. I'll finish that tonight. And you can uh, spray paint it, do whatever you want to with it. Obviously better to do that earlier than later, but we are where we are in the season. So anyhow, that's my system, pretty slick. Now my climbing system to get up in there, which is not really much of a system at all, there's a couple ones that I've used. Um, one of them I only have. Sorry, I'll try to level this for you. Um, I've only got a couple of these. I bought a long time ago, and I know most of the landowners, one of them had them, and, and they absolutely did not like them at all. So I'd like to take this system put it on a tree stand, although nobody seems to have the guts to do that, and I'm sure for insurance reasons they shouldn't. But what's weird is they made it on the stick, which they probably don't make anymore. This was made by Muddy. The only issue I have with this one is it's too small. Throw it around the tree, same exact kind of thing. You throw it around the tree, pull it in tight, but the step itself is too small. And by the time I get like six stacks on there that I need, or six six of them stacked in a row, it gets big, bulky, and heavy. Yeah, you can kind of adapt it, but these get closed up. The problem with these, when they get closed up, is in some cases, I can't get it to do it now, these will get kind of out of time, and nothing's more frustrating than me in the dark. I don't want problems. Everything's got to be 100% problem free, ultra fast, in and out kind of deal. So. That's why I have that. And these are all obviously I hunt public land and I hunt properties that other people are hunting. Um, the only thing I would say about any of that is like, nobody freak on me that I'm going in places where I shouldn't be because I don't, <laughs> I have permission. I just don't, I don't have the, f the facilities right now, like most of you probably to go out and buy 30 or 60 stands and go set them up everywhere. So by the time I do this, like I say every day, literally it may be from start to finish from the ground to where I'm in the tree, turn around, set down, have my bow hook up and everything all set, ready to rock. I may be, may be pushing 15 minutes, maybe. Um, and most times probably 12 minutes. Like I said, I'll show you that some other time. So those are the two systems I use. That one's the exact same thing, wrap around the tree. I'm probably gonna take that off and put it on here. And this is just a, a lone wolf stick. This is a new one for this year. I shouldn't say new one. This is right out of the box. Um, but lone wolves I like because you can flip these either side. I don't have two of them and obviously it's, it never goes out of time. I like my little one cam that I used to have back in the day before solo cam became dual cam for some reason. Sorry, not a little dig right there. I just wish a lot of people would go back to solo cams. 
because they're dependable just like these um, and also obviously it's a little bit lighter I don't have to worry about any timing issues of these things going together opening up at the same time blah 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 all these do whenever you put them on the tree same system as a lone wolf it's just a simple buckle strap comes with it throw it around there tighten it up my problem with buckle straps and why I take buckle straps off of everything is because this little metal right here I can't really seem to get hockey taped obviously so if it bangs on anything it's gonna be loud I don't mind noise necessarily going in what I do mind it's like bacterial odor sent to me control to me is I do what I can but you're never going to actually completely stop there was a, a product made by suppressant Gore-Tex um, way back in the day it was phenomenal that really did work for another time I'll explain it but we don't have it anymore so for the most part I'm just on whatever gear I got I'm not I don't really put any emphasis on any kind of scent stuff same thing with with this when I hockey tape everything up I just want to know that it's working the best of its ability and I don't need any noises and a metal noise when you hear a click or a ting carries a very 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 long ways as most of you know especially on a completely calm night like we had last night so that's why I hockey tape hockey tape everything up that's why I get rid of this system I go to the rope system it's all pretty simple it's all pretty basic it may look like it's a lot but honestly um, once you have that in place you won't need another system at all and yes I know there's lots of other companies out there that make some cool products that are similar with base, base plates I just I hate cringe at the thought of carrying around a base plate um, and then I've in my experience so far with almost all of them they're either really really heavy or they're extremely unadaptable so when I put them on a tree and they're not perfectly sitting straight even if they appear to be, it seems like, I drop the stand on it, I flop down the base, and the thing's crooked, and I just want to scream. So, <laughs> um, old Andre de Quisto, um, who I really don't know, but he came up with a really slick system with that lone wolf, and I know they're, I believe they still make them out there under the same name. His son's named Cody. Good guy. You should look him up. But anyways, that's, uh, that's it. So, a little longer than probably I hope to do it, but it was as short and sweet as I can make it and as significant as I can make it. So, like I say, one day I'll go a little more in depth. Tonight, your weather forecast, hunting forecast, rut forecast, whatever you want to call it. Um, since we have clouds that moved in here in the Midwest and Southeast Iowa, at least, we've got uh, Southeast winds, which have continued for a while now. Um, we've got a lot of warm weather. And actually, we had a Northeast wind, Northwest wind last night. But today, we've got a Southeast wind. It, it wasn't a major significant change. So where you should be at tonight, if you're hunting, is when rain comes in, in general, more so when there's a specific giant temperature drop and our front hits, more so they tend to go to corn, in my opinion, from what I've seen. If you've got green plots, um, you know, with, with turnips in them, right now, hopefully you've got, if you've got in your mix, you set up some Austrian winter peas. Again, another topic some other day, but they should be hammering the living daylights out of those tonight. Um, beans are so-so, not that you can't kill a giant off of beans right now, but they're so-so attractive. Um, so for us, I think tonight where we're going to, we have a little bit of corn left most of it's been picked from a farmer that just got permission on that's it and we're going to slide in the back side of it um, where those deer should be coming out of their bedding areas which in theory are they should be laying mature bucks should be laying somewhere they have the wind at their back and see out in front of them southeast winds all day and they have been for a while they'll be pushing out in front of them more than likely that buck is going to go down and it's overcast so hopefully it's a little bit early and we get him there before he gets past camera light and if he comes on down this is a time at which the year you can actually start calling them too although I don't recommend blindly calling yet until about November 2nd if you see a deer you want to communicate with it another seminar go to a um, deer society and I know that they have a big list of those somewhere on there that you can go through and find out about what all different contacts grunts mean and what breeding grunts are and blah 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 contact grunts if you need them that's really all you're going to be hitting them with right now, and uh, that's pretty much it. So I'll just leave you guys go for the day. hope you all enjoyed it. Um, this is just one of very, very many. Most of these live broadcasts will only be um, about the weather. Some of them may be in the dark because I'll be telling you about in the morning where I'm going to go here and there and how I'm going to get there. So tonight, southeast winds, try to find your bedding zones that animals are most likely going to be laying somewhere where they can see out in front of them, wind at their back, if you've got a different wind direction where you're at, and then headed to a food source preferably corn tonight more than likely anytime it seems to rain the brommer drops they seem to head mostly toward corn so that's where we're hedging our bets tonight and as always it's always a bet all I try to do is help educate everyone and help you guys learn a little bit about what I've experienced and that's my only goal and uh, everything I do is to just put the odds in my favor as best I can outside of that there's no magic wand so 
we'll see. Hopefully we'll get some footage. Love to show you the deer uh, tonight and uh, peace out. Catch you later.